Today I am super excited to be partnering with EcoBaby to show you how to install their latest EcoBaby magnetic safety locks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install these locks on overlay cabinet doors and drawers as well as inset cabinets. And then at the end, we're going to do some troubleshooting of common issues that EcoBaby clients come across. I have here in my hands the six pack of baby locks. This comes with six locks, six strikers to keep the locks closed, stickers, alcohol swabs, extra 3M adhesive. There are two magnet keys that each come with their own cradle, so if you don't want to store them on the side of the fridge, there is 3M adhesive on the back side of those cradles, so you can mount them anywhere up and out of reach. Updated with good clear pictures instructions, but you have me. Most importantly, the newly updated tools to make the installation process easier. Here's the thing. I personally bought and installed a former iteration of these safety locks and they have worked perfectly ever since I put them in place. But the installation was more complicated than I expected it to be. But now, with these new tools that come in every package of safety locks from EcoBaby, installation is so much easier. <laughs> So here's how these guys work. You have your plastic strike plate that you attach onto your cabinet frame. And then you have your lock that you attach onto the back of your door or drawer front. So then when it closes, your lock hooks on the back of the strike plate and keeps the door or drawer closed. So then you come along with your magnet and you hold it up to the front of the door or drawer front and that latch goes down and then you can open your lock. The really cool thing about these locks is that you can put them in an unlocked position with that little toggle on the bottom. So operational, now, locked, unlocked. That's cool for lots of reasons. Rental properties, part-time caregivers, families that might have another kid but they haven't decided yet. All packages also come with optional screws that you can use to attach your pieces with. And you can see that all of the strike plates as well as the locks are pre-drilled for being attached with screws if you need to. But in 99% of surfaces, you won't need to use those because the 3M adhesive that's used to attach these pieces can attach to almost anything. Special exceptions would be surfaces with chipping or peeling paint or super slick vinyl or Formica without any kind of texture to it. But for everybody else, you can just rely on the super strong holding power of 3M adhesive. So let's get one of these on here. There are two main types of cabinet construction, overlay and inset. This is an overlay cabinet because the doors and drawers sit on top of the face frame. The installation for these is different than inset cabinets, which sit inside the cabinet frame so that everything is flat across the front and we'll get to those later. First, take the alcohol swab that has been provided and wipe off the surface where both the strike plate and the lock is going to go. And the reason for that is you want to make sure that the place where your 3M adhesive is going to be trying to stick to is free of dirt and debris. So it's attaching itself actually to the cabinet and not to the grime that's on top of the cabinet. Once the area is clean, take your strike plate Remove the 3M adhesive cover and with the adhesive pointing up and the nose of the triangle shape pointing out towards you, place the striker flush to the front of the cabinet face frame. So right here, you want it to be even with the front. Press and hold the piece into place for 15 to 20 seconds. Here's where it all gets way easier than last time. One of the new installation tools that EcoBaby provides is their cradle. Imagine this is my strike plate that I just installed in my cabinet. You can see there are little fins on the side that will fit into this cradle right here. So with my strike plate already in place, I'm going to take my cradle flat side out and slip it onto my strike plate like so. Next, I'm going to take one of my locks, making sure it is in the locked position, remove the 3M adhesive cover, and then with that latch pointing up and into the cabinet, all I need to do is push the lock right into the empty square in the cradle. Close the door. And it stuck itself exactly where it was supposed to be on the door. You do want to give your door a slight tug, 
to make sure that everything is aligned where it's supposed to be, but don't really yank on it because you haven't had a chance to press the adhesive in place yet. Take your handy dandy magnet, put it over the top of the luck, and you'll know you're in the right place when you hear a click. Open the door. Press your lock into place for 15 to 20 seconds. Remove your cradle and you're good to go. An important step here is you want to put your lock into the unlock position for the first 24 hours that it's in place. This gives the 3M adhesive a chance to fully cure and adhere itself to the cabinet before you're putting any kind of stress on the lock. This is where the butterfly stickers come into play if you want to use them. If you prefer not to just listen to the click, you can place one on the outside of the cabinet door where your lock is on the inside. That way you can just press your magnet directly to that and know you hit it right every time. An overlay cabinet drawer is done the exact same way. You do your swab, your stripe plate with the nose facing out, your cradle, flat face facing out, your lock pointed up and in, close the door, Press and hold everything, and you're good to go. Sometimes with cabinet drawers, the drawer body height interferes with where the lock needs to go, and we'll talk about that when we get to the troubleshooting. So now let's take a look at how to install these safety locks into an inset cabinet, or a cabinet where the doors and drawer fronts are set into the face frame and everything is flush across the front. What you want to do is take your cradle and take the other installation tool, which is a ruler. With the flat side of the cradle facing towards the ruler and with the side of the ruler that has numbers on it facing up to where you can look at it, put the ruler into the cradle in that very top slot. Like this. And take your cradle and put the flat side on the outside or inside of your cabinet door and measure the thickness of the door with your ruler. My door here is just under two centimeters. So now what I want to do is leaving the ruler in my cradle, I'm going to take my strike plate and with the adhesive side facing up, I'm going to put it into my cradle just like we did on the overlay cabinets. Remove your adhesive. What this setup is going to allow me to do is hold this strike plate two centimeters into my cabinet by keeping an eye on the two centimeter mark on my ruler and line it up with the front of the cabinet face frame. I'm saying two centimeters because that's the thickness that my door was. So whatever the thickness of your door or door front is, hold your ruler to that depth. So I have two centimeters lining up with the front of my face frame. So I'm going to press and hold my strike plate into place at that depth. Then I can take the tools out. And then from there, the install is identical to the overlay cabinets. So go ahead and put your cradle back on your strike. Put your locked lock into the cradle. Close the cabinet door. Unlock the lock and open the cabinet door. And press and hold the lock into place. And that's how to do an inset cabinet. All right guys, time to troubleshoot. So let's say you're trying to install one of these locks in an inset cabinet, but there is no material behind the face frame for you to attach your strike to. This is probably gonna be really common when installing these on inset cabinets, because a lot of the times a face frame is a three quarter piece of material going this way, rather than a solid piece of material going back into the cabinet. So if you have to put your strike behind that face frame, you essentially have to put it in midair. What you can do is take that little block of wood, and this is just like three quarter by three quarter, and then take some of your extra 3M adhesive that you got in your package and put it on the front of the block, and then hold the bottom of that block flush with the bottom of your face frame on the back side of your face frame. You are gonna to wanna to use an alcohol swab to clean the back side of the face frame before you put your block in and then hold your block in place for 15 to 20 seconds. And then once that block is in place, you'll be able to hold your strike as far into the cabinet as you need to clear your drawer front and proceed with the install exactly like we did the inset doors. One other thing you might need to account for when you're installing your strike plate in particular is the size of your cabinet bumpers. 
Now some cabinet bumpers are made out of felt and they're super thin and they won't change your install at all. But if you have bumpers like mine, that piece of rubber is probably almost an eighth of an inch. The reason that matters is let's say I install my strike normally, just flush with the front of the face frame. And I put my cradle on and I put my lock in the cradle. I will be unable to shut my door far enough to get the lock to attach to the door. So one thing I can do is remove the cabinet bumper and then the door will shut far enough to catch the lock and I can press that into place. So after I have that connected, I can then reattach my cabinet bumper and everything works great. Or if I don't want to monkey around with my cabinet bumper, I can simply hold my strike a little bit farther forward, about the same distance as the depth of the cabinet bumper itself. And that also works great. Another thing to be aware of is that because these locks work off of magnets, you can't install them too closely to metal inside the doors and drawers. Now, this could be visible metal, like the backside of a hardware screw, or it could be inset nails that even though you can't see, you have to be careful not to install your lock over top of them. Otherwise, it will permanently sit in the open position and not function as a lock. So that's just something to be aware of and not something you can always avoid in advance. But if your lock, even if it's in the locked position, is staying permanently unlocked, odds are you've located it over top of some kind of hidden metal in the door and you simply need to move it over so that it can be fully operational. Along with that, if you ever drop your magnetic key and you put it back together and then it's not working anymore, odds are it's because you put the magnet back in backwards. And so the polarity has been reversed. So it's like you're trying to use your key like this instead of like this. So the easy way to fix that is just pop it out again and reverse how you had it in there and then everything should go back to working how it's supposed to. All right guys, last but certainly not least, let's talk about what to do when the height of your drawer body does not get along with where your lock is supposed to be positioned. You close your drawer to get everything set, open it back up and see that your lock is sitting like halfway on your drawer body, that is not going to work long term because if only the bottom half of your lock is secured to a surface, the top half is already ready to start prying off anytime the lock experiences any resistance. This is not something that happens with all or even most cabinet drawers, but in case yours are among the lucky few, Eco Baby has a couple of solutions for you. Solution one. You have your lock temporarily installed, but you have not pressed it firmly into place because you have noticed that it is sticking up above your drawer body and you don't want to leave it that way permanently. Grab a tape measure and measure from the bottom of the inside of the drawer to the top of the lock. So for me, that is 2 and 13 sixteenths from this plane to this plane. Also, I'm gonna take the lock off after I have my measurement so that it does not permanently attach itself in that position. What I want to do is stick my lock at the very top on one side of the block. That is two and 13 16 inches long. And I'm going to take the other side of that block, hold it against the side of my drawer, and also hold the block all the way to the bottom of the drawer, and mark the line across at the top of the drawer. Then what I want to do is fill this entire surface where the block is going to be making contact with the drawer body with 3M adhesive. Or if not the entire side, at least a goodly amount. Remember to press and hold your 3M for 15 to 20 seconds. After I have that all set up, I'm going to take my block and again holding it all the way to the bottom of the drawer body, I'm going to center it on my strike plate and press it against the drawer body. Gently at first, because we want to make sure that it's in the right spot and everything's lining up. Before I press everything real firmly into place, I'm going to shut the drawer, make sure that everything is lined up. 
open it back up, and then press it firmly into place. There is one complication of this solution, and that is that although EcoBaby uses the strongest magnets available for their keys, on my cabinets, just one magnet is not strong enough to operate the lock through three quarter inches of a drawer front, three quarter inches of a drawer body, and the 3 16 inch of the plastic block. You can see it will affect it slightly, but it's not enough to fully lower the latch to get the lock to open. The workaround for that is putting both of your magnets that come in your package together. Use them at the same time and they create enough force to lower the latch. So it's a little bit of special operating instructions if you're going to go with that solution, but it's easy to measure for, easy to install, and then works great after that. Solution two. You've just realized that your lock is not fully seated on your drawer body. Here's what you do. You measure from the top of the drawer body to the top of the lock. In my case, it's only about 3 16 of an inch. Then remove everything before it gets real stuck. If the number that you just measured from the top of the drawer body to the top of where the lock was, was a sixteenth to three sixteenths of an inch, you want one block. If it was a quarter to seven sixteenths of an inch, you want two blocks. If it was half to five eighths of an inch, you want three blocks. Or if it was eleven sixteenths to seven eighths of an inch, you want four blocks. And if it was taller than seven eighths of an inch, you probably just want to go ahead and go with the first solution we already went over. When you get your box, take some 3M adhesive and make a solid strip across the front. Next, take your first block, or in my case, I only need the one, and attach it to the bottom of the face frame where your strike plate goes. And press and hold for 15 to 20 seconds. If according to the super fancy table I just showed you, you needed more than one block, here is where you would put adhesive across the front of it and stack it directly under the block you already applied and hold and let that set for 15 to 20 seconds. And here's where you can start to see why you probably wouldn't want to do more than four of these. After a certain distance lowering your strike plate into the drawer body, you would start to lose usable storage space. So go ahead and install all one, two, three, or four of the blocks that you need. After your shim or shims are in place, install your lock system exactly like you would on any other drawer, making sure to install your strike on the shim and proceeding business as usual from there. So now because I have brought the height of the strike down, my lock is fully seated on the drawer body and I don't have to worry about how well it's stuck on and if it's going to get ripped off. An easy way to tell which solution might work best to you is to see exactly how the lock is lined up on the drawer body. In this scenario, this is a drawer body. If about half or less of the lock is showing above the drawer body, I would go ahead and go with solution two just because it's less to work around long term. Not that putting two magnets together is a big deal, but you know what I mean. If your lock placement looks more like this, it's just barely catching the top of the drawer body, but it can't clear it, I would go ahead and go with solution one, just because that might be too far to shim your strike plate down. Well guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any further questions or if you need to contact Eco Baby Support, I will have their information linked down in the description box below. 